Okay, boys and girls, sorry for that. Um, my Elmo is really giving me some issues. So I'm going to work with Mrs. Rojack uh, this afternoon and see if we can get that figured out. But in the meantime, here are the problems, 4 through 15 explained, and then 16 through 19 on the back. So for question number 4, you have to write a fraction that's equivalent to 1 fifth. Well, many of you hopefully looked at this model and you said, but this isn't broken into five equal parts. It looks like what they did was that they originally drew a model with one, two, three, four, five pieces, correct? But now they're asking you to find the fraction that's equivalent to one fifth. When they had one fifth, that meant this entire part right here was shaded or one out of five pieces. However, then they went ahead and they split that model right down the middle, just kind of like Mrs. Connor did in the video. And now you have, if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten equal parts that your whole figure is now divided into. And when you look, we're still looking at just this green shaded section. And now you want to ask yourself, how many parts are shaded? Well, out of ten, now there's one and two. So an equivalent fraction to one-fifth is two-tenths. Let's continue. Number five, write two fractions. So this time we need two that are equivalent to four-twelfths. So when I look at the model, the first thing I want to think is, okay, what fraction are they showing me? So if I start right, let's start right here in this space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So what they have modeled here is one, two, three, four shaded the fraction four twelfths. But they want to know two fractions that are equivalent, and we know equivalent means equal to. So what I do, if I have a model that's given to me like this, I want to think, okay, sometimes this is a little bit harder to see, but can I break this apart evenly into equal parts any other way? So what I think of when I see these circle models is that I could divide it. It almost looks like a peace sign. So now I don't know if you can see that on your screen, but Visually, hopefully you can see where I've broken that apart now into one, two, three equal parts. So we're talking about now thirds. And when we look, how many of those thirds are shaded? <clears throat> Again, we're looking at this whole chunk right here. And I see that it would mean that one out of the one, two, three equal parts was shaded. So four twelfths is equivalent to one third. Now, another way that you could do this, I'm gonna have to grab a different colored pen. If I have this, which has been shaded into thirds, what I could do is then kind of like, again, what Mrs. Connor did, take each of those sections and create now one, so right here, two, and then cut this one, three, four, and then split this one. So now you can kind of see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six equal parts. And if we look at the model, again, we're just talking about one of those six equal parts. So let's say we want to focus on just this section. Then how many of those pieces are shaded? Well, there's one and two, two six. Now, there's another way that you can do this. Again, if this helps you, um, I never recommend drawing circles. I think circles are really, really difficult to draw. So what I do is create a rectangular model. So we're going to use a rectangular model for question number six. Write a fraction that is equivalent to two-sixths. So what I do is first create six equal parts. I did that by cutting my rectangle in half and then creating thirds. And I'm going to shade two out of six pieces. So I need to think of something that's equivalent. So what I could do is just take this rectangular model 
and I could cut it right down the middle. So now instead of six equal parts, I have one, two, three, four, five, six plus one, two, three, four, five, six here. I now have twelfths. And of those twelfths, how many are shaded? You can see one, two, three, and four. So an equivalent fraction could be four twelfths. Some of you may have looked at this model that's already provided here for you. And maybe you just cut each of these slices, if it's like a pizza, in half. And then you saw that in this orange area, there were one, two, three, four equal parts shaded. So now let's look at the last one using the model. And then I want to show you guys maybe a different strategy you might use for these questions. So two fractions that are equivalent to two thirds. Well, again, you could go ahead and just cut this in half. And now you can see that you have six equal parts, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then shaded, you have one, two, three, four, six. It's still the same area as two thirds. And then if you had to break this apart again, what you can do is what Mrs. Connor did. You could draw a line separating each of these parts now into two equal pieces. And now if you count, how many equal parts do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That makes sense because you cut them in half. And then shaded, you would have two, four, six, eight. So eight twelfths is also equivalent. Now let's look at these problems. Two eighths is equivalent to how many fourths? So this is a different strategy, something that you can do. You can draw the model. So this is where I want to show you two different ways to solve. In third grade, I always taught my third graders to draw a picture with two rectangles, one on top of the other. So a picture and then just cut it in half. We're going to illustrate the first fraction, two eighths in the top rectangle. And then we're going to find the equivalent fraction of fourths in the bottom rectangle. So in the top rectangle, I need to create eight equal parts. So I'm going to cut it in half, cut each of those in half. Now I have four equal parts. And now I'm going to cut those in half so that I can have eight equal parts. And out of those eight, I can see from my numerator that I need to shade two. On the bottom, I need to create four equal parts because they want to know how many fourths are equivalent to two eighths. So I'm just going to follow these lines down. So now I have fourths and I need to shade one. I can see, how did I know to shade one? Well, I'm going to look at the two eighths and then follow it down so I have the same amount shaded. And when I look at my fourths, I can see that's equivalent to just one of those. So that's one way you can solve. You can draw a picture. Another way that you can solve, and most students tend to prefer this method, is that look at the relationship between the numbers. How did you get from eight down to four? Well, you cut it in half. You divide it by two. And what you do to the bottom, you must always do to the top. So you're going to do the same thing. Divide the top by two. Two divided by two leaves you with one. That's the same answer we got when we drew the model. Let's look at another example. Now, when we go from this number, four over to eight, how did we get from four to eight? This time we didn't divide. The number got bigger. We multiplied by two. Four times two gave us eight. So what we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. So two times two is equal to four. Let's look at number 10. Again, how did we get from two to six? The number got bigger, so we multiplied by three. We know that two times three is equal to six. So without thinking, we're going to do it to the top. One times three, you got it, equal to three. Moving right along. How did we get from three to six. We multiplied by two. We just talked about that over here. Now we must do that to the bottom. So I know that three times two 
is also six. Now, doesn't that make sense? If you have a sandwich and it's cut into three equal parts and you ate all three parts, well, now you've cut it into six equal parts. Doesn't that still mean you ate the whole sandwich, all six out of six? Yeah. Two, four, six. Let's keep going. Moving right along. I told you this video would be quick. And now we're already at 10 minutes long. How did we get from 5 to 10? We multiply by 2. What we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. So 1 times 2 is equal to 2. 1 fifths is equivalent to 2 tenths. Let's look at question 13. How did we get from 5 to 10? Uh, again, you just told me that a minute ago. We multiplied by 2. So now what we do to the top, now we're filling in our denominator. We also do to the bottom. So we're going to multiply by 2. 6 times 2 is equal to 12. 10 twelfths. Number 14. I don't know why there's a line through it. Don't mind that. How did we get from 8 to 2? We cut it in half. We divide it by 2. So now 12, do that to the bottom, divided by 2 is equal to 6. Last one. How did we get from 4 to 8? We doubled it. We multiplied by 2. So now 5 times 2 will give me what denominator? 10. 8 tenths. Great job. Almost there. Take a look at the back. We're on question number 16. So now we're applying what we've learned about equivalent fractions to a word problem. Monarch butterflies migrate. That's a word you saw in writing today. When they sense daylight hours are shorter and temperatures get colder. Write two equivalent fractions. So we have to write two equivalent fractions for the part of the migration a monarch butterfly can complete in one week. So here's what it can travel in one week, one-fifth, and they want to know two equivalent fractions. So what two fractions are equal to one-fifth? Well, something easy that you can do is just double the number, right? It's kind of like if you had one-fifth, illustrated here with five equal parts and you had one shaded, couldn't you just cut this figure right here in half? And now you have tenths, ten equal parts. And then if you look, how many were shaded? Two. And again, that same rule applies. If you double the bottom, then you had to double the top. Five times two is equal to ten. One times two is equal to two. Let's say now you want to create a different equivalent fraction. Let's say you want to multiply by 4. 5 times 4 would give me 20 equal parts. And what I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. 1 times 4 would be equivalent to 4. So 4 twentieths. That would kind of be like if I went ahead and cut this in half horizontally and this in half. So now I have 20 equal parts. And then you can see there's one, two, three, four now shaded. <clears throat> Almost done, moving right along. Garrett buys lunch for himself and his friend. That's nice of you, Garrett. He buys two sandwiches, two fries, and two malts. How much did Garrett spend in all? So he bought two of these, two of these, and two of these. Well, this is a basic multiplication fact, I believe. 2 times 8 is equal to 16. 2 times 3, three that's 3 plus 3, is equal to 6. And 2 times 4 is equal to 8. I have to take these products here and add them together. When I do that, I should find that he spent a total of $30 on lunch. Number 18. Connor said to the nearest 100... So I guess we're going back to revisit rounding. I've attended school for 800 days of my life, right? Three numbers that could be the actual number of days Connor has attended school. So we want three numbers that when rounded to the nearest 100 could be 800. So there's more than one answer, just like there's more than one answer to this question up here that could be correct. So we could say 801, that would round down to 800. It could be anywhere between 801 all the way up to, let's see, 800, 
849. Once you hit 850, it would round up to 900. You could also go below, you could say like 760. All right, these would all round to 800. Last one, number 19. Josh, Lisa, and Vicky each ate one fourth of their own pizza. <coughs> each pizza was the same size, but Josh ate one slice. Okay, so here's Josh's pizza, and he ate one fourth. He ate one slice. So there's Josh. Let's see, Lisa ate two slices. So same pizza, four slices, but she ate two. Oh, I see. So they ate the same amount, but hers is two eighths. That's what that's saying. And then Vicky ate three slices. How is this possible? Now let's see, how would this have to be cut? Whoa. So if you look at just the section of pizza that they ate, they're all the same size. So how could we explain it? We might say something like, Josh was cut into eighths. Lisa cut hers into one, two, three, sorry, Josh was cut into, not eighths, fourths. Lisa cut hers into eighths. And Vicky cut hers into twelfths. So they just cut their pizza slices kind of smaller. That's all, but they still ate the same amount of pizza. All right, guys, so we will spend more time on equivalent fractions. Sorry the video ended up being a little bit longer, but um, let me know. Hopefully tomorrow my Elmo will be working, and we can talk about any questions that you may still have. Thank you.